Hey, Hunters, HaloZoo here for another uh, D&D 5.5 video highlighting the various changes uh, after D&D 2024 released. For those who don't know, D&D 5.5 is a personal homebrew project I've been working on where I'm basically reworking 5e to be a what I believe is the best it can be using the original as kind of a base to build up into a overall, I hope, better system uh, that is more well-rounded and balanced in certain ways. Uh, anyway, without uh, further ado, let's get into the first of the mage classes I'm going over this week. Uh, so next will be Warlock and then Wizard. But first, we have the Sorcerer. So right here at first level, uh, we have Sorceress Bloodline, which is your subclass, which is moved back to first, where it should have stayed, honestly. Uh, you'll also get Spellcasting, of course. Uh, you do get the Bloodline Spells feature, which is something new that I've added in, that is basically additional spells that are unique to the build, that you have... Excuse me. Uh... And it will include various upgrades to it as you progress. Uh, we also have Innate Sorcery from 2024 showing up here. Uh, so yeah, just nothing too special. But uh, as we'll see, there's been a few tweaks here and there. Second level, we have Font of Magic and Meta Magic. Uh, you'll also notice that you have uh, three Meta Magics to start off with. And you go up to eight. So you have a lot more Meta Magic available. Uh, so you'll have more options, and there are also more choices, as we'll see later. Uh, third level, we get Sorceress Restoration. Uh, so this is the... a uh, So you get this much earlier, and you'll basically get a bit of your uh, sorcery points back uh, more often. But we'll see what that does. Uh, you also get a feature from your Bloodline at third level. Fourth level, Bloody Score, Increase, and Fate. Standard stuff. Uh, fifth level is going to be Magical Guidance and Improved Bloodline Magic. So you get an upgrade to your Bloodline spells. Uh, sixth level, we have Devastating Magic and another Bloodline feature. Seventh is a Sorcery Incarnate. So it's an upgrade to Innate Sorcery, as well as the second... Uh, Sorceress Restoration Upgrade. Or, well, the first upgrade to it, but the second time you get stuff from it. Uh, eighth level, Ability Score Increase and Defeat. Uh, nope, I meant to down. Uh, ninth level, Greater Bloodline Magic, so you get even better Bloodline spells. Tenth, Bloodline Feature. Eleventh is going to be Innate Meta Magic and uh, three points from Sorceress Restoration. 12th, ability score increase and a fate. 13th, we have powerful bloodline magic. Uh, 14th, bloodline feature. 15th, uh, we get spell surge and uh, sorceress restoration, so the penultimate upgrade to it. 16th, ability score increase and a fate. 17th, though, is going to be true bloodline magic, so this is the ultimate form of your bloodline spells. Then at 18th, we get Metamagic Mastery and the final upgrade to Sorceress Restoration. 19th, Ability to Increase and Defeat. And 20th is Sorceress Apotheosis and a Bloodline feature. So you get lots of cool stuff now. Uh, so hit points, D6 per level for hit dice. And you start with 6 plus con score HP, meaning that the lowest you can normally have is actually just one point below the highest you could have normally. Uh, and this is assuming through point by in even 2024. So uh, basically, you know, how uh, a barbarian could start with 15 HP. Well, sorcerers and wizards by extension can start with 14 minimum so yeah you will be way more durable still the squishiest but you will be less squishy at first level than you were ever before except fourth edition but fourth edition is weird 
Uh, then HP per level is going to be 4 plus con mod. So as it usually would be. Proficiencies, no armor, but you do get all simple weapons. Uh, don't get any tools. You do get con and charisma saves. And you'll get to pick two from among arcana, deception, insight, intimidation, nature, persuasion, and religion for skills. Don't think I had anything for them yet. Spells, pretty much the same as it was before. So, nothing special. Sorcerer's Origin, it's about as you'd expect, just with more stuff. And it's back at first level, where it belongs. Uh, then we get Bloodline spells. So, you learn the Arcane Bolt cantrip. So, that is a completely new cantrip. Uh, that is basically the, um, it is the new cantrip in 2024 that they added. That's what that is. It's just Arcane Bolt here, and it works a little differently. Uh, then you also get another first rank spell determined by your bloodline. Uh, and you can cast the uh, first rank spell once per day at first rank without expending a spell slot. I uh, need to change the wording on that. Uh, innate sorcery, however, also at first as a bonus action. At least your inner power for up to 10 minutes until you fall unconscious. You use it twice. We're gaining expended uses when you finish a long rest. Uh, and you have two benefits. So the first one is accurate spells. So you get plus two on spell attack rolls and the save DC of sorcerer spells you cast. So basically both are now just a plus two. Uh, however, you also have spell guard. So accurate spells is kind of what you got before, but now you also have spell guard, which says, hey, you also have plus two AC against spell attacks and plus two on saving throws against spells, psionics, and other magical effects. So basically... Any magical source of, like, harm coming your way, while innate sorcery is active, you have plus two against. Whereas with uh, accurate spells, you now get plus two on your outgoing spells. So that's just a little thing of, hey, here's some stuff. Also, spell guard, uh, basically it's just been folded into innate sorcery. It was originally going to be a separate feature that they just always had, but it's now part of that. Fanta Magic works about as it did before, so... Still like, oh hey, you can use two sorcery points to get first rank spell back, etc, etc. You can also expend a spell slot to get some sorcery points back. Then you also have Meta Magic, so you'll start with three now, and... So you have a lot more available to you. Third level, we get Sorceress Restoration. So whenever you finish a short rest, you regain one Sorcery Point. So at seventh level, you regain two Sorcery Points. Three at eleventh. Four at fifteenth. And then five at eighteenth. So basically, you just get some Sorcery Points back uh, every short rest. So you get to use more of the resource. So yeah, have fun with that. Uh, magical Guidance, whenever you roll a skill or tool check, spend a sorcery point to re-roll it and use the new result. Uh, and you also have improved Bloodline spells, which uh, you now cast uh, your leveled Bloodline spell at second rank. And you also have a Arcane Bolt upgrade. Devastating Magic... Get sixth, basically add plus charisma to damage and healing rolls of sorcerer spells you cast. Pretty much the standard stuff. Uh, seventh rank, uh, sorcery incarnate. While innate sorcery is active, you can use one extra magic, meta magic option per spell you cast. And in addition, you can also enter innate sorcery without expending a normal use by spending two sorcery points. Uh, so basically, each short rest you have access to it if you want to spend the sorcery points. Uh, Greater Bloodline Spells at ninth. What if you cast... Spell without a spell slot, cast third rank. And you also get a modifier to the first rank spell. Eleventh, Innate Metamagic. Uh, first Metamagic option, that isn't Twinned Spell. 
uh, because that one works very differently, uh, is free. So basically, hey, you get a free metamagic option, except Twinned Spell. So that one is an exception. It works weird, so no. Uh, 13th is Powerful Bloodline Spells. When you cast, so you now cast that spell at 4th rank, and you get a second Arcane Bolt modification. Spell Surge at 15th, when you drop to 0 HP or less, you stay in action to cast a standard action spell as a free action. After you use the feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. 17th level, True Bloodline Spells, cast that spell at 5th rank, and you have a second 1st rank spell modification. 18th is Metamagic, Matter Meta Metamagic Mastery, so when you cast a spell, first metamagic that isn't Twin Spell, and cost sorcery points, cost one less sorcery point to use. So basically you get a, even more of a discount on other metamagics. And Sorceress Apotheosis at 12th. When you cast a spell first rank or higher, treat it as if you cast it at one rank higher. And your damaging cantrips deal an additional plus prof damage. So basically, hey, you know all these spells you can upcast? Yeah, they're always upcast even higher. So, yeah, you just go crazy with spells now. Uh, as for the metamagic, uh, most of them are the same. Like, careful spell. Uh, this one is now proficiency bonus plus spell mod. Creatures to just not be affected at all. Distant spell, uh, basically, if spell's range is less than 30 feet, it becomes 30 feet. If its range is 30 feet or more, double the spell's range instead. Uh, and you can't use this on spells of the range of self, but that's because they have another one, which we'll see later. Then we have Empowered Spell. So this now works with healing spells by default, uh, as you'll notice. So basically you can choose up to your spell mod, damage your healing dice, rolled, and re-roll them using the new results. Except extended spell still works as it does. Inescapable spell. Uh, this is what heightened spell now is. So basically, uh, inescapable spell. Choose a creature to have disadvantage on all safety throws against spell. Uh, and we have quickened spell, which has an extra blurb at the bottom. But basically, cast a standard move or bonus action spell. A standard move action spell is a bonus action. Bonus action spell is a reaction or reaction as a free action, or cast a spell that doesn't use a standard move or bonus action or reaction in half the time. So basically, if it takes longer than a standard action, cast it in half the time. Uh, you still can't cast more than one spell first rank or higher using your standard move and bonus actions. It's bad magic, unless you also use twinned spell. Uh, you can only use this once per turn. Uh, so yeah. This combos with Twin Spell, which, slight spoiler, is definitely not the 2024 version. Subtle Spell, basically, you can just ignore verbal or somatic components, as well as material components without a gold piece cost. Twin Spell, so this now costs a number of sorcery points equal to 1, plus 1 per spell rank above first, so essentially 1... And you can't use this on cantrips anymore, but what it does is choose a spell you cast during your last turn, cast that spell again without expending a spell slot using the same action type. So basically, hey, I cast Fireball. Okay, cast that again for uh, less sorcery points. Now, this also combines with Quickened Spell, so if you use Quickened Spell on your turn, you can use this metamagic in combination with it. Basically, three plus one. Uh, so basically, it costs two plus the spell's rate to do this, but you can basically double cast the spell now. Uh, so yeah, that is what it does now. It does twin the spell, and if you combine it with quicken spell, you get to spam big spells now. Uh, then seeking spell. Uh, still just, hey, re-roll the spell attack. Uh, then transmuted. Choose damage type spell deals. Swap that with another, 
uh, damage type you dealt by a different spell or cantrip you know. It isn't already dealt by the spell. So basically, this always works. There's none of that BS where, oh, it only works if it's elemental damage. Yeah, no. Get out of here with that. It, this just does it for any damage type. Have fun. Uh, then there are the new ones, including Expansive Spell, which basically just expands the area a spell affects. So, uh, you can just increase the area, the radius of a sphere, cylinder, or circle by 5 feet, size of a cube or cone by 10 feet, height of a wall or cylinder by 10 feet, and the length of a wall or line by 10 feet. Uh, and if the spell targets more than one creature, you can target one additional creature with it. Uh, so basically, you just target more stuff with the spell. But, uniquely, you can use this multiple times on a single spell, but you have to use it two sorcery points uh, for each time you want to use this again. Uh, I might also specify that this ignores the normal rules of one metamagic per spell. So basically, you can dump a bunch of sorcery points to make a massive fireball like uh at fifth level you could dump like all five of your sorcery points into adding 15 feet to the radius of your fireball so it's even bigger uh so yeah that's just a very simple idea. Uh, then we have Selfless Spell. Basically, you can cast this spell with a range of self on an ally 30 feet of you instead of yourself. Yeah, it's straightforward what it does, but I thought it was a cool idea. Uh, and then there's Heightened Spell. So, uh, basically, you cast it if, if it was cast with a spell slot uh, one rank higher. So, you take two sorcery points. To just upcast the spell with a lower rank spell slot. So you could cast like a first rank spell as if it was a second rank spell. Do note, however, you don't have to be of the level to actually cast that spell at that rank. So this can be used to cast a uh like third rank spell as if it was fourth rank at fifth or sixth level. Uh, then last but not least is Doubled Spell. Basically, you spend two sorcery points to cast a cantrip twice with the same action. So basically just, oh hey, I cast two standard action cantrips at once. Uh, and it's kind of intended as a, hey, here's an alternative to twin spell for cantrips. So... Should be some interesting stuff to have fun with. Uh, as for the bloodlines, uh, we got Dragon Magic, which uh, has seen a facelift. So, their abilities, uh, they have Draconic Resilience, so your maximum HP is increased by one per sorcerer level. Uh, and you add your strength modifier to your AC while unarmored. So yeah, you use strength now, uh, which is a callback to 4th edition. Uh, then they have Draconic Ancestry. So you basically uh, choose a type of dragon ancestor from this table, and it affects various features, and you learn Draconic for free. So basically, as you'd expect... Choose your color, get stuff for that. Uh, you also have uh, Dragon's Magic, so this gives you six spells known, uh, including two first rank spells, as well as a single spell of second rank to fifth rank. Uh, and yes, this is basically the same list as uh, 2024, just with the new Dragon Claw spells, which is their uh, special bloodline spell. 
And also, the extra damage of Dragon Claws and Arcane Bolt is the same as your Draconic Ancestry's type, so this determines what that type is. And when choosing a damage type for Chromatic Orb, Dragon's Breath, or Summon Dragon, you can choose your Draconic Ancestry's type, even if it normally isn't an option. So, for example, if you were to cast Chromatic Orb, normally you can't choose Necrotic Damage, but if you have the Topaz Draconic Ancestry, you can choose it with that. Uh, and you can also choose to cast these spells without a somatic or material component, but you must always choose your Draconic Ancestry damage type. So this does mean you do get to ignore the material component of Chromatic Orb and Summon Dragon, but it will always be whatever type you have. So, for example, if it's bronze, well, you're always summoning a lightning dragon or doing lightning attacks with it. Then we have Elemental Breath at third. So this is a new ability. Uh, as standard action, you can unleash a breath weapon in either a 15-foot cone or 30-foot line, as determined by the breath weapon shape of your draconic ancestor. So the one's here. And each creature inside must make a deck save against your spell save DC, or take 3d6 plus strength damage to the ancestry's type, or half on a success. And once you use it, gotta wait for a short or long rest to use it again. So basically once per rest, you just get to do a breath weapon. Boom. Uh, and this counts as a first rank spell for metamagic, so you can metamagic with this if you want to. Uh, so you can pull some shenanigans like Heightened Spell It or all sorts of other stuff. Uh, might change how this works, but oh well. Uh, then, at uh, higher levels, so it increases in damage as a cantrip, so naturally it just gets better and better as you progress. So I might drop this down to 2d6. By default. And at 11th level, it becomes a 30-foot cone or 60-foot line. Then at 5th level, we have improved Bloodline Magic, where, uh, yeah, the upgrade is when you cast Arcane Bolt, you can instead make a melee spell attack against all creatures in a 15-foot cone or 30-foot line as determined by the Breath Weapon shape. So this is actually based on uh, what we saw in the playtest, where... Uh, the Sorceress Burst spell for Dragon Magic. Because this is an awesome thing that I wish they kept with. But they made it where you could do it as a cone or line. Which I love the idea of, but the problem was it was still a ranged spell attack. So I was like, wait, that doesn't really work. So here it's just, you do that, but it's a melee attack. Rather than ranged. Six is still Elemental Infinity. Gain resistance to your Dragon's Ancestor type. And when you deal damage to that Ancestry type, instead of the normal bonus, you just treat immunities like resistances normally are and ignore resistances. Then for Greater Bloodline Magic, uh, when you cast Dragon Claws, you get to attack a second target in reach. So normally it just targets one person. Then we have at 10th level, Draconic Form. Uh, don't have the stats to this form, but basically once per day, spends five sorcery points as a bonus action. Be a dragon for half your sorcerer level minutes. So yeah, just, you become a dragon. Thirteenth, we get powerful bloodline magic. Uh, also, I realized I've put draconic form. I'm probably going to cut this. Uh, yeah, that one's going to get reworked. Powerful bloodline magic, though. Uh, when you use Arcane Bolt as a cone or line, you deal half damage on a missed attack. Uh, then 14th, Draconic Wings. So, going back to the innate sorcery giving you the wings, uh, you just have a flying speed equal to your walking speed in that form. And you can use a bonus action to gain these wings for up to one hour, or until you fall unconscious without needing innate sorcery to be active. Once you use the bonus action, you can't do it again until you finish a long rest. So basically... Once per day, you get to just use the wings without innate sorcery. But you also get them in innate sorcery. Uh, basically to kind of make it where 
your flight is more limited than a certain other bloodline that we will see later. Uh, as it's one of the half that is finished because the, uh, yeah, there's uh, three that are, I have stuff for at least, and three that just don't have anything. Uh, 17th true bloodline magic. Whenever you cast Dragon Claws, you can make two attacks against single target instead of two attacking two different targets. So basically, you just attack twice, and you can be the same target or two different ones still. 20th level though, Draconic Form. Uh, plus three extra damage on damage rolls your dra Dragon Ancestor's type. And a standard action, become a Draconic Spirit of your Dragon Ancestry's type. As if it was cast at 10th rank. So yeah, you just... You're the equivalent of a 10th rank Draconic Spirit. Have fun with that. Uh, use your normal HP as well as your base ability scores unless they're lower than the Draconic Spirits. So your strength is going to be what the Dra Draconic Spirit gets, but other than that, doesn't really matter. Or actually, uh, probably your constitution. Maybe wisdom or intelligence, but... Uh, and it lasts for one hour until you drop to zero HP. Once you use the standard action, can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So, yeah, that's the capstone. 10th level is going to change. Not sure to what, but we'll see. Wild magic. So, this one is very different than what they've got. Uh, so, basically, the idea I went with is... What if it was, instead of just oh, it's always happening, you just... Oh, you're building up to the Wild Surge. So, for Wild Magic Surge, when you roll a d20, if you roll the nat 1 or 2, gain 1 Wild Surge point. Uh, probably going to rework this a bit more, uh, but if you roll the nat 20, you gain or lose 1 Wild Surge point. Whenever you're critically hit, become bloodied or take a long rest, you lose 1 Wild Surge point. Uh, and when you have six or more wild search points, you lose all wild search points and roll on the wild magic surge table. So basically, the idea is you build up to the boom. So, uh, I might change this to coincide with the idea that there's a lot more positive effects on the wild magic table and way fewer negative ones. So I might change it up a little bit. But uh, essentially, the idea was you can control it a little bit, but eventually it's like, boom. Here comes the wild magic uh, to kind of change how it triggers. Uh, Tides of Chaos, though, whenever you roll, attack roll, skill check. Your saving throw, add plus dex to the roll and gain one wild search point so they use dexterity. Chaotic Magic. Whenever you cast Chaos Bolt. Uh, so basically, whenever you uh, damage a creature with your Chaos Bolt, since that is your Bloodline spell, by the way, uh, you can gain a wild search point and make it act as if you rolled the same number on the D8s. So basically, you can guarantee a Chaos Bolt bounce as, uh, yes, Chaos Bolt is still around, and I'm probably going to keep it because uh, it's kind of been turned up to 11 now. Uh, mostly because uh, due to a change in how spellcasting works, you always roll the damage, which means you can roll... Uh, and that's even on a miss, which means it can bounce on a miss. Uh, however, with this one, it's just, hey, uh, yeah, you can just gain wild search points to guarantee it bounces. Uh, I might do this once per cast, but basically just a, hey, yeah, you can guarantee a bounce for a wild search point. Uh, then bloodline magic. Uh, of course, you learn chaos bolt. And whenever you do arcane bolt, roll a d10 and... That is the damage type. So you can do one for force, two for radiant, three for thunder, four for acid, five for cold, six for fire, seven for lightning, eight for poison, nine for necrotic, and ten for psychic. So you notice that I kind of put the edge ones as 
kind of the most powerful ones, while uh, the more common resistances are in the middle, uh, while also making sure poison was not in the middle, because that would just be mean if it was kind of an average roll. So I put that outside the averages. Uh, then at third, we have Surging Chaos. Whenever you deal damage, you deal extra damage equal to your current Wild Surge point count. So basically, as you get Wild Surge points, uh, you get a stacking bonus to damage rolls that is reset when you actually get Wild Magic. And improved Bloodline Magic uh, whenever you cast Arcane Bolt. If you roll a nat 1 on a damage die, you also get to add damage dice. So it's now a nat 1 or natural 8 on the damage dies. So basically, uh, you get to do more with it. Uh, then you have Bend Luck at 6th level. Whenever a creature you can see in 30 feet of you makes an attack roll. Uh, or does basically any d20 roll. Use Reaction to add plus Dexterity modifier or minus Dex mod to the roll. And gain a Wild Surge point. So basically, you can add or subtract your dexterity modifier from something but you get wild surge points so you can build to the chaos uh then greater bloodline magic at ninth uh basically when you cast chaos bolt it automatically jumps on a critical hit regardless of the damage types rolled so uh instead of just only triggering on a on doubles it's now oh yeah you crit okay auto jump uh, tenth, Power of Chaos. All damage you take is reduced by an amount equal to your current Wild Surge points. So, basically, the inverse of Surging Chaos. So, now you get a damage reduction equal to your Wild Surge points. So, it's kind of a unique way to just build up. Try and, like, float around four to five Wild Surge points before exploding basically uh then 13th uh so when you roll arcane bolts damage type uh roll twice use either results and you can choose any type if you roll the same result uh 14th controlled chaos you can also gain or lose one wild search point when you roll a natural 19 on the d20 and we never trigger wild magic surge roll twice choose either effect uh if the rolls are the same you can instead trigger any result of 50 or lower. Uh, 17th, True Bloodline Magic. When you cast Chaos Bolt, it deals both damage types you rolled and can crit on a roll one lower than normal, so 19 or 20, usually. Then Spell Bombardment. Once per turn, whenever you roll the minimum or maximum roll on a damage die, re-roll it and add both the original and new rolls to the damage. Might change it up a little bit, uh, kind of refine it with uh, what uh, 2024 has done. But as it is, I've, I'm kind of happy with it. Uh, just because I like the idea that you are building up to the inevitable chaos. Uh, and it offers a bit more reliability with it. But you're also able to kind of control, okay, I don't want to do it yet. I want to have my damage in... Re Damage reduction a bit longer. Uh, and then we have Storm Magic. Uh, yeah, that is... Since I decided that Aberrant Mind and Clockwork are not going to be updated yet for me, uh, I'm going to keep with uh, Storm. So it is one of the four extra ones that is being added. Uh, your Bloodline spell is Thunderstroke. Uh, and you have Windspeaker, which gives you Primordial and the Elementalism cantrip. So you just get free elementalism. Tempestuous magic uh, still works as it is, did before pretty much. So when you cast spell first rank or higher, fly 10 feet without provoking opportunity attacks before or after casting a spell. Uh, and when you cast arcane bolt, uh, you can choose cold, lightning, or thunder damage when you cast the spell. You also get lightning strike, shatter, call lightning, ice storm, and convoke elemental. Uh, so a note on that spell name. That is what the 2024 Conjure Elemental is going to be called. It is now 
Convoke Elemental. So they will be split off into their own spells, and uh, all of them, a certain two overpowered options in particular that are on the Druid list, will be nerfed. Yeah. Uh, but basically those are being split off into their own spells, while the Conjure spells are going to be effectively new versions of what they originally did. Uh, kind of a mixing the ideas of what the Conjure spells did and the good parts of the Conjure spells and put that into Summon spells formatting. Uh, then at third, we get Storm's Power. So spells treat cold, lightning, and thunder immunities as resistances normally are, and you ignore the resistances, and you gain resistance to cold, lightning, and thunder. It's basically the Draconic Power deal, but they do get it earlier, though. I might move that back, but I don't know. Uh, Storm Guide at sixth, pretty much the same thing. Uh, but before that, we have Improved Bloodline Magic. So whenever you would add damage type to your Arcane Bolt, you can choose to have it damage another target in 15 feet of the original instead. So you could spread the damage out. Uh, and if that die uh, extra damage dealt is also the maximum result, you can also do that damage back to the original target or do it to, the, to that specific target. Or go for yet another enemy and just chain a bunch of enemies to take a bunch of damage. Uh, Storm Guide, uh, pretty much standard action. Make rain stop falling. And, uh, 20 foot radius sphere centered on you. And if it's windy, you can use bonus action to choose the direction of the wind in a 100 foot sphere. Basically just, hey, you can manipulate storms and stuff. It's a ribbon feature, so who cares? Uh, six level low, Heart of the Storm. Whenever you cast a spell of first rank or higher that deals cold, lightning, or thunder damage, choose yourself or a creature targeted by that spell, and each creature is choice in 10 feet of them, takes dexterity plus charisma damage of the triggering type of the spell, or of the type of the triggering spell. If there's no other enemies in range, the chosen creature takes that damage instead. So... <coughs> uh, basically, uh, if you, so it's just been changed with a simple but drastic change to basically fix storm magic. They're not all about being up close and personal anymore. You can do that if you want to, but you can now choose people around the target of the spell. So let's say you did a chromatic orb for lightning damage okay you can also do that lightning damage to creatures in 10 feet of the target instead of yourself so it's not just hey get up close and personal even though you have no defensive upgrades like uh, dragon magic does because that's a great idea right uh yeah no that isn't what you do instead you can now do it to the target instead uh ninth level when you cast Thunderstroke, target of spell attack has disadvantage on the saving throw if the attack roll hit, and the thunder damage dealt is doubled if the spell attack crit. So, Thunderstroke, by the way, uh, you hit a target with lightning, and then an explosion of thunder hits around it. Kind of a uh, similar but different ice knife. And what this does is basically, hey, if you hit with the attack roll, you also get uh, a more accurate thunder damage deal and if you crit that damage the target takes is doubled wind soul at 10th so this now appears earlier where uh yeah you gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed and you can use a bonus action spend four sorcery points to grant up to three plus dex creatures your choice in 30 feet a flying speed equal to their walking speeds for an hour uh once you grant flying speeds this way you gotta finish a long rest before doing so again so, they are based around dexterity, of course. Uh, and with Wind Soul, you get to basically just fly around for free at an earlier level than Dragon gets to fly around. And you also get to share it if you want to. 13th, though, Powerful Bloodline Magic. Uh, Arcane Bolt always deals cold lightning and thunder damage. And you can split it 
Uh, so you can split the damage type between multiple targets. So basically, by default, it has three dice at this level. Uh, so you can choose to damage uh, one, two, or three creatures. And so you can spread those three dice as you want. Uh, 17th level, of course, you can split that four ways. Uh, so you are two creatures for two dice each or four creatures for one dice each rather than uh, what you'd get at the start, which would be, oh, I target two creatures, one for two dice and one dice for the other or three creatures for one die each. And of course, this still combos with uh, their first improved Bloodline Magic, uh, except you can also spread the damage between those three targets. Fourteenth, we got Storm's Fury. So basically, when you're hit by a melee attack, use reaction deal D12 plus Dexterity modifier plus Charisma modifier, Cold Lightning Thunder damage, and target has to make a Strength save or be pushed 20 feet away from you. Uh, or push 10 feet away on a success. Uh, might lower the distance this pushes, but oh well. Uh, I might even remove the pushed on a successful save. Uh, Truth Bloodline Magic, though. Uh, Thunderstroke can crit on a roll one lower than normal. And all targets of the Thunder Damage have minus two on their save if the spell attack hits. So it's even more accurate if that spell attack hits. 20th level, though, Might of the Storm whenever you deal cold, lightning, or thunder damage. Deal plus 1d12 extra damage of that type. And your flying speed and the fly distance and tempestuous magic are doubled, so you're just better at flying. Might change this up in the future, but... Oh, well. Uh, as for the other ones, we've got... Earthen Magic, which is going to be based around Geomancy. Uh, I do have their spell list, which is going to be Earthen Armor for their Bloodline spell. Uh, Earth Spike which is a new spell at first rank. Spike Growth, Erupting Earth, uh, Stone Skin, and Wall of Stone. And notably, uh, I do have an effect for their first Bloodline Magic. Uh, also, they get to do uh, Bludging, Piercing, or Slashing damage with Arcane Bolt, uniquely. Uh, but for their Arcane Bolt upgrades. Uh, the first one, basically you can choose to have it be a melee spell attack with a 15-foot reach instead of a range spell attack, and you can slide the target 5 feet in any direction on a hit. Then, uh, the second upgrade for it is going to be whenever you cast Arcane Bolt, uh, you can choose 2 damage types to deal instead of 1, and you can deal half the total damage to another creature in five feet of the original target on hit. So basically you can cleave with it. Divine Soul, uh, don't know what I'm doing with this yet, uh, but it is getting changed. Same with uh, Shadow Magic, but it's Arcane Bolt damage types are decided as Necrotic Poison or Psychic Damage. Other than that though, don't know what I'm doing with it other than, hey, it's here, it's getting upgraded. Uh, but, as for the Bloodline spells, uh, Arcane Bolt, of course, it's the new cantrip, uh, which is actually a melee touch by default, if you want it to be. So you can use a touch spell, but uh, Earth does a... You can do it a bit further away. Same with Dragon. They both have options to target stuff a bit further away. And if you roll the maximum value, you can roll up to plus charisma, extra dice. Uh, then we have Dragon Claws, which is a transportation spell, and it's a melee touch, so you have to reach the target. Uh, but it deals D12 plus Charisma Slashing damage on hit, plus 2D8 damage of your Draconic, of the Dragon's type. And you deal plus 1D8 of the variable damage type. And if you dealt damage with a spell, uh, you get Charisma plus Strength Temporary Points. So you basically get some temporary points as you just claw into someone. Uh, then we have Chaos Bolt, which roughly works the same. So it's 2d8 plus 1d6 damage on hit. Half on miss now. as a ranged spell attack and under 20 feet. And you just add 
to the D6 damage uh, for slot level. Or slot rank now. Uh, and it just jumps as you, if your all doubles. Or in some cases, uh, do something else if you're wild magic. Uh, and last one, I have stuff for Thunderstroke. Uh, basically, do a lightning strike as a ranged spell attack. In 180 feet of you. Uh, which does 2d4 plus charisma lightning damage on hit, half on miss. Then targeting each creature of choice in 10 feet of them must make a con save or take 2d4 thunder damage, half that on a success. And both of the damage types increase by plus 1d4 damage for each slot level. So uh, each rank, it does more damage. Uh, other spells don't know what they're doing yet, uh, what they're even going to be. But without further ado, that has been the kind of first look at the Sorcerer as it's been updated, even if it's still not really that finished. Uh, I know I even have more updates to do going forward. But uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little look into it all uh, as I continue working. And uh, stay tuned for the Warlock video and the Wizard video coming out later today. Uh, there's also the videos for... Uh, the Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, and Paladin uh, already on the channel. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, I will see y'all next time. Halo Zoo, out.